Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video we're going to be talking about a new piece of spellbook support that has been spoiled for release in Code of the Duelist, which should be coming out to us around the August time frame of this year. And I've already done a few duel videos using this card, and I'm a huge fan of the card in general in terms of what it does and what it allows for spellbooks to do in the future potentially, especially as we move into link format where the deck could potentially see a little bit more potential viability in play because of the fact that the link changing the format up, while not really slowing the game down, it does necessarily change up the way the game is played, but spellbooks are not hindered by this, as far as the spellbook and the prophecy decks in general are, you know, constructed and built, essentially. But, the card in question is Spellbook of Galdrabach, and it's also been called Spellbook of Rudri, or Rudra, rather, uh, in its original translation. I don't know if Galdrabach is something that we should even be looking at as far as the official English translation of the name or not, but it's what the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia page has it under when you redirect from Spellbook of Rudra. So, I mean, it could potentially be the English translation. It might be a direct translation from the OCG name. Not quite sure. But anyway, Spellbook of Galdrabach, it is a very well-rounded card and does quite a lot for the deck in terms of what it does allow you to have consistency wise but its effect is send to the graveyard one spellcaster type monster you control or one spellbook card in your hand or field except spellbook of galdrabach and if you do draw two cards you can only activate one card of this name per turn so it's essentially a themed destiny draw for spellbooks and that's actually just amazing in terms of what it allows you to have it allows you to have increased consistency it allows you to get rid of duplicate spellbooks that are either on your hand or on your field it allows you to get rid of duplicate spellbook magician of prophecies for actual card advantage and that just turns into a plus one interaction right there because your spellbook magician of prophecy will yield you a search and if you're searching for this or even if you're not if you already had it you're then going to tribute that spellbook magician of prophecy away to draw two cards yielding you a plus one essentially overall overall this card is great because also it's just another spellbook name to hit your graveyard which since we don't have spellbook of judgment in the format thank god that card should never come back arguably that card should have never been printed um definitely one of the best archetype support cards that has ever been printed in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh and deserves its spot on the ban list very much so but spellbook of judgment filled a weird role whereas with just secrets and just master you can't establish a spellbook of fates full effect on your first turn outside of spellbook library of the crescent being in there as well or just some random spellbook hitting your grave to give you the full three different spellbooks you need to fulfill fates activation requirement to banish cards now this card actually fixes that to a degree because this is a card that allows you to rotate spellbooks in your handout for new cards, essentially allowing you to hit possibly four spellbooks in Graveyard as early as turn one, making your fates super live. I mean, you could have two live fates very easily turn one. Of course, fate is only a once per turn, but you see what I'm saying. You'd be able to fate on your opponent's turn and then fate on your turn rather consistently with the, the ability to just put extra spellbooks in your graveyard off of this Destiny Draw-esque spellbook. So it allows you to rotate out dead cards. The fact that it allows you to send spellbook cards from field is also just huge. I think this card is fantastically in ter like built in terms of its design. Um, the fact that it can send spellbooks from, gra uh, from field to grave as well. If you draw duplicates of your field spell, you can just use the field spell that's on the board to fulfill this requirement, and then you're good. Um, a bunch of different little nuances. If you have star halls on your field that you don't necessarily need anymore, or if you draw... Uh, this uh, this card, like the, if you draw the Rudra or the uh, the Galdrabach, <laughs> excuse me, while you have uh, like a Star Hall up, you could just use it to send the Star Hall to grave and get more cards back, depending on what situations you are in as far as your play string. Now, unfortunately, you cannot use Spellbook of the Master to copy this card in your graveyard and then send Master to grave to fulfill the requirements. That's not a legal play because of the way game state recognition goes. Game state recognizes that. Spellbook of the Master is a card that is already going to resolve and destroy itself, so it is not a valid target for Spellbook of Galdrabach. So, that's a little bit of unfortunate, like, not synergy. But essentially, this card is fantastic. And like I said, I've already done a few videos on this card, playing it in Spellbook variants in general, and I plan to do quite a few more, because there's so many different Spellbook slash Prophecy variants that you could explore utilizing this card. Now, unfortunately... This card doesn't really synergize that well with one aspect of the Prophecy deck in general, and that is High Priestess of Prophecy. 
High Priestess, those of you may remember, or if you don't remember, I will inform you. High Priestess of Prophecy requires you to have three spellbook spells in your hand to reveal to special summon her under her own condition. And then when she's on the field, she's essentially like a dark arm dragon. She can banish a spellbook from your hand or graveyard to destroy a card on the field. So it's a very solid boss monster for the archetype. But it requires you to have three spellbooks in your hand to reveal to summon her. That is where this card really conflicts with the archetype. It's the really only area that it conflicts in, in a major capacity, in a major way. But with this card, you're going to be incentivized to get rid of dead spellbooks that are in your hand to draw new cards. Now, unless you are drawing two new spellbook spells, you are not going to be fulfilling your High Priestess of Prophecy summoning condition any better than you were just by keeping those cards in your hand, because obviously the chances of you using two spellbooks in hand to draw two cards and those two cards also being spellbooks, rather low as far as probability-wise. And it's just not something you consider to be feasible. And so you're unloading your hand of all your spellbook spells, and if you're playing a High Priestess of Prophecy build, then you're going to run into some potential problems there. But overall, this card is designed very well, and it meshes well with so much of the archetype that that is a potential downside that can just really be kind of overlooked. It definitely synergizes incredibly well with World of Prophecy, because World of Prophecy would be able to add this card, plus another spellbook back to your hand to immediately be used as discard fodder, or you'd be able to just send World of Prophecy to Grave to revive with something like Spellbook of Life. There's multiple different things that let you like abuse this card in World of Prophecy builds, as well as just like things in general like Card of Demise builds, getting rid of duplicate Spellbook Magician of Prophecies in your hand, stuff like that, to make your Card of Demises easier to fulfill, more potent if you had multiple monsters in hand. All these sort of little nuances just kind of tie in together and make this card incredibly well-rounded, and I'm a huge fan of it as far as Spellbook support goes. And like I said, this deck could see some resurgence once Link format hits because of the fact that it's very much unaffected by the new rule set changes. It doesn't go into its extra deck, but maybe once every, like, 10 to 15 games. And that's only if you're not playing the Card of Demise build. If you're playing the Card of Demise build, you're basically just trying to stick Jaugen. And if you're sticking Jaugen, then nobody's touching their extra decks. And, like, so there's no point in even, like, worrying about the new Link Summoning rule and Link Summoning mechanic because you're literally preventing all special summons from happening by protecting a Jaugen. So... There's a bunch of different things that you could do as far as spellbooks for builds. There's Dark Magician, there's World of Prophecy, there's High Priestess of Prophecy, and then there's the Demise builds. And then there's a few more things after that as well. You could play like Shadal spellbooks, and like, there's a bunch of different stuff that you can work with that this card just helps support even further because you can send a Shadal from your field to grave to draw two cards. That sounds like a cool interaction. All this sort of stuff. I'm actually really excited for this card, and I'm really excited to explore as many possibilities for this card as possible in the coming months and weeks on my channel so if you're interested then definitely look out for those but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below all that sort of nonsense do you like this card do you hate it do you not like spellbooks were you even around during 2013 when spellbooks were a big threat or are you very unfamiliar with the deck in general i want to know all these things in the comments down below definitely curious of your opinions as always but other than that like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to help support me directly and support the channel's growth and all that into the future, as well as get into a raffle giveaway for a box of Maximum Crisis going on at the end of this month once it enters stores, then definitely go check out the Patreon page in the description. Like I said, raffle giveaway happening at the end of the month for a box of Maximum Crisis, so if you want to enter for a possible chance to win that, then definitely go check that out. Also, there's a reward tier that gets you personal access into my private Discord server. If you want to chat with me like 24-7 on a daily basis and also play games with me for videos, then definitely check that out as well. But otherwise, if you're looking to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards, then definitely check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've had to deal with thus far. Both pricing and shipping-wise are top-notch from what I've experienced. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. Again, let me know what your thoughts are on this card in the comments down below. Very curious of your opinions and very curious as to how many of you actually played during 2013 when Spellbooks and Dragon Rulers were around or are more of you more newcomers to the game that haven't really experienced what this deck is and are very curious as to how that stuff works. Let me know in the comments down below. Again, super curious. I always like to see what people's like little reactions are to certain things. So definitely leave a comment down below. But other than that, that is it as I've already said. Thanks for watching again for like the third time. And take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.